Um, so this one, a sign missing import export for the last password change TC, so apparently missing values in the import export. Um, what, so what's nice with Orchard 2 is that because the content item is a JSON document and is exported, every, we export everything by default. So by default, we export the content item, the full thing. So by default, there is nothing to do in the import export method of the drivers. And it's just the, the on special cases that you will update the value of the object on export in, uh, import to resolve things or to remove stuff, change values. So this, the default is you don't have anything to do. So these things, for instance, will have been caught automatically. Um, fixing, for example. Yep. Also, also, it changes everything that the uh, segment two commits are <laughs> just fixes related to the first one. Oh, because you're exporting stuff? Uh, yeah, but um, in the meantime, we also uh, discovered some, some issues uh, with, with this uh, import export feature uh, we have added, and then also discovered something else with the same feature. So, fixed the new implementation two times. Because of this change? Uh, yeah, so there, there was a mistake in this change. Oh, but I don't see the, the other one. Uh, oh, oh, this sorry, one, no, this one, uh, yeah, two uh, commits, sorry, okay. Yes. So the, the other two are... are okay, uh, really yes, we don't features. support min value in the database, right. Okay, not null, why not null? It could be null because now it's supported, we support that this value is null. Hmm. Um, there was some bug fixes by the past. Interesting. Yes, I was like, he created a, a branch, but no, we created it during the pull request. So he created a branch with some fixes and a block post permission, just so that someone can validate it and also apply some fixes if necessary. I think there is an open issue to to fix something on this branch and instead of having to wait for him, but he can do it. Uh, anyone can fix it. So we accepted the pull request on a specific branch. Uh, Matthew PR, which was merged about fixing, well, completing the fix, the implementation of uh, blog recipe widgets that are created by default on the blog recipe. We were, uh, we needed more commands to do that, and he also uh, refactored that so that there is a widget command service that can be shared across these uh, modules. Allowing culture and layers to be selected in widgets. There was a bug. We showed it during triage. If you select a culture, if you have a culture picker on and you select a culture in a widget, it switch it switches back the layer to the default layer. Then if you select another layer, it switches back the language to the default language. So there was no way to select a layer and a language. So he fixes it. Um, this is just making that work. Bad name, apparently. I don't understand why it doesn't work, but it should work. Adding cache kit generation extensibility. This is some extensibility. It's not a full extensibility, so the bug has not been closed. But um, so he's adding a way to um, change the key that is generated. OK before we use it in the output cache. Oops. Okay. Um, Allow the initial value of some fields to be tokenized. Uh, this is something that had been done on dev and that was done also on one the next now. Uh, some fields to be tokenized. On dynamic forms. Fix event bus for an exception. Yeah, so we had two or three bugs related to this one. Uh, in some cases, the event bus will throw, will throw an exception um, because of a generic type definition, whatever. So now it's fixed. Three bugs, something like that. Two. Dix oh, it dixies the 4584. Um, 
Matthew what have you done uh, yeah you speak of you you didn't review what I wrote uh, added label display block rule and by the way you again forgot to merge one x into dev every time you forget it yeah I've been a bit slack this week but I didn't do that other PR that I wanted to get moved merged in so that's why I didn't get to it excuses all around that's okay you can uh, fix it on Thursday added label display block rule Okay, this is the admin team, so this is on the, I assume, layout. Labels, fixes, media library, pick your field, anti alignment issue. Good, so Sipke found some time to work on that. Okay, some progress. And I saw a poor request also from uh, a new contributor on the admin team to make things better also for the uh, culture picker. So this is going on. Questions? Everyone is joining. Even Antoine. Good. Um, good, good, good. Um, so Orchard 1. Orchard 2. Orchard 2 will be about demos because what I worked on now works. So I will show you. Let me see if I'm missing something from anyone else. Yeah, Antoine is the modules module. Matthew. Uh, welcome Matthew to the Orchard 2 project. Very useful changes, you see. Fixing my across typos. I do uh, like fixing a good typo. Yeah. And uh, Nick is working on his um, refactoring of the extensions. I'm currently reviewing it. You might see it on this machine. Uh, first demo, first demo, first so this demo, first demo is about the modules module. There was a modules module already uh, before last week, but it was doing almost nothing but the recipe step for enabling features. And then Antoine started to work on porting the modules module. Um, he was blocked uh, on some things and then I kind of took over the module and made it work. Uh, I'm not sure that Antoine has seen it already, have you? I ping you on Skype and the PR because I created a PR to be approved or tested. I'm not sure you've seen it. Okay, good. Why don't you answer then? Ah, so login. The module is enabled already well by default all the modules are enabled but now we can decide because we have a view for that uh, this is so i i'm following every time i create a new item i'm following the new navigation organization that we've uh, worked on three weeks ago so this is missing an icon but not on the other branch i'll show you which is actually adding the icon i'm waiting for them to be merged so but design is here and design will have site it's like site design okay uh, site and there is modules to list the modules and um, first, I tried to make it look like Orchard 1, but it's such a pain. It's not that I could not, but there are so many information to show in a small card that I'm like, okay, let's forget about it. Because we need to show all the dependencies, it's the status, checkbox, description, title, we have actions. And I'm like, no, it doesn't fit. So I, for now, I'm just displaying it like a list like we do everywhere and can be changed to be nice later. Uh, so this is the list of features. Any question, please interrupt me. Um, features, title of the feature, um, description of the feature. I use tags to show the dependent features. Um, and, 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 and they are grouped by category. And by default, today we put everything in the core. This is completely wrong, but this is just temporary. Um, we might want to be able to group whatever, sort by name, sort by group, we'll see. So far, I'm just using the same thing as O1. So we have checkboxes for multi, uh, for block action, but it doesn't work. You can at least check them, but it doesn't work. Disable and enable. Disable when you can disable one, when it's already enabled. Enable when it's disabled, okay? To show you, you see this content definition link. This is provided by the content types module. So if I find the content types module here, 
it's enabled so I can disable it. I will click, but it will be fast, okay? It's faster than option one. I click, and it comes back. What happened is when I clicked, it changed the list of features. It restarted the tenant and did a new request on the same page. So, and it was sub-second to do everything. And you see the, the navigation is not here anymore. It has disappeared because the module is disabled. And if I enable the module, content types, it's done again. Same thing with list. You will see that list right now is disabled. And as soon as I enable it, you will see something happen. Boom, breakpoint in Visual Studio, which means it was not stopping at that before, which means the startup continuous services were not called because the, the module was not um, enabled. Okay, so that means it works. I continue and it's running. Okay, so this is uh, simple module management, but at least we have simple module management and uh, we can use it. So from that, we can uh, improve. Um, the UI, the features, but at least we have a, a nice bootstrap module for for modules management. Questions? I didn't open a design issue on that because uh, Antoine had already started working on that. Um, but if the people thinks we need to change some things in this module, uh, feel free to say so. Otherwise, we'll try to get the same feature set as the one. We had a request uh, from a customer about a year ago that I forgot to, and we, we never got around to implement it, um, implementing it in, in Orchard 1, but essentially <clears throat> the idea was that when you click Enable, uh, sorry, if you click Disable on a feature, that Orchard would show you like a list of which other features would be disabled by association. Do you okay. think that makes sense to add at this point? Because sometimes the tree of dependencies can be quite long and it can be almost impossible to know. Um, and it's just when you do that, it's too late and, ah, oh, crap. It, yeah, happened exactly. to me, it happened to me 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I had to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I disabled uh, contents and it broke something because the dependency graph was wrong. But, okay. Uh, yes, uh, should we then display a pop-up with a confirmation? Are you like, are you sure you want to disable it? Will you disable this, 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 and this, maybe? That would be my preference, yeah. I think okay. that would make sense. Okay. Um, yeah, we can do it. We should, we should do it. Um, we might have more inf like this thing and it's not really obvious right now because our tags but it's not obvious that it's a, a dependent module we might add a title or a label to, to show that uh, also use the, um, the color code to say um, this one is disabled so in, in or green and red just to show that they are already enabled and or disabled things like this uh, but yeah to improve to reload everything and to change the What, did I miss something? Restart, is this something we need? Um, this is something that happens already in Orchard 1 and that we actually need. So what I mean by restart, be careful, be careful, restart. What is the subject to restart? I'm not saying application restart, I'm saying tenant restart. Tenant restart is a um, soft restart of a tenant, which means on the we, what we do for restart, we remove the shell context from the list, which means on the next request for this tenant, because the app is still running, it sees that the shell context hasn't been loaded. It will try to recreate the shell context. Recreating the shell context is about fetching all the enabled modules for this tenant, finding all the services for this tenant, and adding them into a, a, a service container, and creating a new shell context with a service container, and the list of dependencies is, uh, of types in this in this shell in this tenant. That's it. Just about restarting the middlewares and the services for this tenant. It's not the app. It's just a soft restart. That's why it's kind of fast. Okay, we are not restarting the app. Just reloading the service container and the middlewares. Because whenever you enable or disable a module, you change the configuration. You might change the configuration. You might change the services and you might change the middlewares. So we need to scratch it and remove it and um, restart it. Okay, makes sense, Soteris. So it's not really an app restart, it's a tenant restart. The app is not restarting. This is why it was fast. Okay, no other questions? Then second demo. Uh, so 
there is a pull request for this module. Feel free to test it to find some bugs before you think it should it should be approved in uh, in master. I think it should be approved in master, and from that we can um, improve it. Okay, because it works. Um, then this one. So this I was reviewing uh, Nick's uh, pull request. This one is about multi tenancy. Um, so it started. I will stop it and restart it to just to get the URL. Multidency. So I, I opened a design issue on GitHub last week to ask for feedback on the multidency thing. Uh, Sergio uh, requested lots of features, uh, which makes sense, but for an MVP uh, it was out of scope. Um, so I, I asked him to create more issues to track the features. Uh, you see, boom, they all make sense. And I agree with mostly of all of them. So it, it comes from someone who actually uses these tenants, like logging per tenant, uh, um, yeah. uh, executing recipes or commands in batch of tenants, which we already have on the branch to the northern one. Uh, so things like this. Yeah, they all make sense, but they, they, they are not about the design and what we should provide as a default feature set. They can be done with a different module or different features. Um, and, and yeah, after talking with Zoltan on this one and also on Skype, um, I wanted to remove some features from a one just to see if we could do that or do that differently. In the end, what we have in a one is the perfect mix of uh, flexibility and simplicity. Uh, let me show you. So now you see the design as the, the icon. So the icon is provided by this module in this, right now. Uh, tenants. You see, I already have one tenant. So same thing, simple list, but simple works. Um, tenants have the state here. Green means running. There is also initialized, disabled. You will see. I can add a tenant. I can edit an existing tenant. Editing a tenant means uh, not changing its name. You can't change it, but you can change the URL prefix and the host name. Okay. You can disable a tenant. I won't do it. You can reload a, ten a tenant. Okay. Uh, again, it's just to reload the set of services and middleware to reinitialize it. Uh, in case some configuration has changed and you want to reload it, or some it's, there is a bad state, you don't know, you want to reload this tenant. Um, so here I will create a new tenant. Um, you see it's almost the same screen as a setup on purpose. It's like a mini setup, uh, like in Orchard 1, but it looks like more a setup. Uh, so name, I will call it uh, foo. URL prefix, uh, foo. Host name, I don't want to set one. And then you can define database presets. Database presets are like, you know, one things that you don't want the setup. Ah! Uh, it's interesting. I fixed a bug earlier, but this should work still. So database preset, I know why. Uh, sorry, I will fix it. Um, so that uh, values that you don't want the setup screen to show. Okay? So you can say, I will create a tenant with a setup screen but the database will already be pre-filled. Pre and you can just define the provider or just define the table prefix or the three of them, what you want, okay? So here I won't say anything. And it's important to still have a setup screen. I, I was going to this way, like, why not just set up everything from there, not to have to go to the setup screen? But actually, we have to go to the setup screens if we want to, to define a user and a password um, and to be able to share this information with someone so we don't actually share the password, we let someone create and define the password. Um, so let's create this one without any defaults. So now it's uninitialized. It's the foo. If I go on, so this is a link to the tenant, okay? I can click on setup or click on the link directly. It will do the same thing or edit to change some values. Okay, again. And before, because it's not initialized, I can change the database already after I, I won't be able to, so let me show you. You see, I can change the presets if I want already, still, but not after. So I click on Foo in a new tab. I see the setup. Okay, what is the name of the site? Not other than, so I will call it uh, uh, Foo also. Core recipe, SQL Server, uh, type, database prefix, I'm thinking about 74 right now. Connection string, super user. So I'm using the same thing, password. Setup. I made a mistake.
Okay, setup done. It's, it's so fast, right? It's quick. I love it. Um, you can see that on this tenant, I'm not logged in. Okay, on this one, the default one, I am logged in. It's beautiful. It works. Uh, so I'm going back on foo, and if I log in, we have everything. But we don't see tenants. Okay, so we just show the tenant management on default. Um, uh, tenant, which makes sense. Okay, same thing. Um, and just to show you content definition, content type, I will create a new type, article, create, I have a type article, title, body, auto route, who cares? So I have an article type on the foot tenant. If I go on the default tenant, I don't have the article type. Okay, if I go on the foot tenant, Something also I did based on the feedback. If I go on the foot tenant on the front end and I click log off, I'm on the home page of the foot tenant. It keeps on this one. Okay. So this, this works also. There was a bug for that. Um, so here I can create my tenant. Now if I hit F5 on the default one, did I hit F5? No. I can see now this one is running. Okay. And you can say disable. Like temporary stop it. It was fast. I click foo. Boom. I broke everything. Oh my god. I found a bug. That's fine. Motion settings. Interesting. Oh, this, oh, I see why. Let me reload it. No, there's a bug. It's, it's not removed from the running shell table or something like this. I will check that. But I will re-enable it. Okay, this is removed. F5. It's completely broken. Object dispose exception. Memory cache. Interesting. Default tenant works, but not this one. Disable, enable, reload, whatever. Interesting. Completely broken. I'll check that. That's sad. Um, what else? I will create a new tenant with database already defined. Foo bar, bar, host name, we don't care. Database, SQL Server, test 75 that create so this one is initialized if i go on the setup screen you see i can't define the database it's already done in the site settings so I call it bar finish again I broke everything. Certainly was impressive. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that. Everything is broken. It was beautiful. Everything was working. Okay. That's fine. I'll fix it. Oh my god. That's it. Oh, you see, you can't disable the, no. This one is initializing, what? Yeah, the issues, that's weird. I was doing so many things and everything was working, it was beautiful. I can even change live the, the foo thing. The foo is still broken, or maybe I need to restart Visual Studio, maybe I, I broke everything. Let me see. Dashboard, tenants, 
foo works and I can even do like live change the URL prefix foo2 save click on foo it goes to foo oh you see it, it was working I swear it's crazy and I have the latest interesting I don't know. Okay, I will fix it. Ah, it was working. I'm so sad. I even fixed the issues like you can't say like futu slash bar anymore. It will provide radiation. This is an SPNet MVC bug. They are fixing it for one one. Uh, you see, it's, so that's weird. Interesting. Okay, maybe I in, in, introduce more bugs than I fixed them. Okay, good. Uh, questions, comments. Okay, so this is back to the screen. What did I miss here? Uh, yeah, no, Zoltan. Yeah. So, you know, when we were, no, we were not restarting the app. We, again, at some point we were restarting the app, but since a few, maybe last year or two years ago, we are just restarting the tenants that we need. Um, yeah, that's that's what I meant. Okay, logging pertinent, why not? Yes, that's what uh, Zoltan also... Uh, Zoltan, sorry, Pian, uh, Sergio requested. One wish command line support for configuring default tenant without executing recipe. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> something that's tripped us up in a, a bunch of automation scenarios is that you can using the command line. You can not configure the default tenant to target any, an existing database. You can do that from the setup screen, but not from the command line. And you can do it for any other tenants. But I'm realizing it has more to do with setup than with... But you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Orchard setup site. Boom. Oh, not the, def not the default tenant, you mean? I think yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought you, you would be able to do that. Uh, I okay. thought so too, but that's not maybe. Possible. Yeah, maybe it needs a tenant to have the command lines, and yeah, okay, a command line to set up the first tenant, the default one. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, done. Then, topics or questions? Topics. I have navigation. Uh, what do I want to say? For, yeah, I know what I want to say for navigation. Uh, harvest. Harvest. News. News, who's there? Is Rob there? No. Sipke either. George is here. Just mentioning them because they are in the loop for organizing that. Um, I booked the room. It's not paid, but I signed the papers. So I need to pay now. Um, so it makes it official. Now I can create the Eventbrite um, uh, site. It's not where we said it will be because apparently there were some confusions with the dates. Um, and also <laughs> what they will the, um, bill us, which was weird. So uh, in the end, it will be in TKP. Yes, TKP New York. TKP New York, which is a conference room uh, building. It's very close to where the Hilton was. Let me show you. So TKP New York. Apparently, George says it's a good location. Apparently, Rob says it's also a good location. So, yeah, if you want to talk, George, explain where it is and if, why it's good. I don't know what you do in New York all the time, but apparently, you know it's good. So, it's there. Okay. And the date is set for the 21st and 22nd of February. 21st right? and 22nd. And it's a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Okay, this is very important. Tuesday and Wednesday, because the Monday will be um, a holiday in the States, the President Day. So just to prevent any issue we could have, it's on Tuesday and a Monday, and a Tuesday and Wednesday. And it gives you more time to visit New York, which is good, right? You see Manhattan, Central Park. Um, yeah. So that's good. 
Um, so I will create the event right as soon as uh, we agree on the ticket price. How much do you want to pay for the ticket price? Uh, you never ask that. Well, usually because you're a speaker, you usually never pay, Sultan. <laughs> and yes, yes, we, well, I never asked that, but do you want to pay one? So it, it doesn't change much to us. That's kind of the good thing. So we, so in, in Alicante, I think it was, how much was it? 100 or 90? Euros? Yes, 90 I think euros, I think. Euros. Orchard best. So we'll do some also uh, early early bird price and last moment price, like with a difference. So you can register early. It will force you into registering early. Um, event bright. Oh, where, where do I find register today? Yeah, ninety dollars. Ninety ninety dollars or ninety euros? Ninety dollars it was. Wow, that was cheap, right? Crazy. Um, one red euros. This is what I think around that. Like, yeah, next year and this year might be 100, 150. I'm not sure. I don't think it will be much more. It doesn't change much for us. So this will be the the price around. The, the uh, question we have every year is that you will pay for your flight, you will pay for your hotel, and just that will be like five to ten times more than the price of the conference. So yeah. adding adding 100, making it 100 and 200 won't be a huge difference for you. Um, yeah. At the same time, yeah. for us, either. And and usually your company will pay for the ticket, maybe not for the hotel or the flight, but for the ticket they will pay, for instance. So this is maybe the, where we should get the money from. Um, so I don't know. So this is this will be around the price, and I don't think the price will prevent anyone here from uh, from coming. Um, so we'll see. This will be. If yeah, I have the, majority, the majority of it's going to be the flight and the hotel cost. The, the, the conference cost is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And and you get much more. And it's interesting because just food and swags and you get more than what you pay for, usually. Uh, so. It's never an issue. So February, uh, yes, 21st and 22nd, February. Um, hands up. Um, question, who from the list will join? Or is sure to join or? I will certainly be there. So do a plus one if you, in the, in the chat, if you think you will join. It's even more important for Europeans because usually when we do it in the US, um, like in Redmond and in Santa Monica, it was harder for the Europeans to join. <laughs> Just need a new passport. Daniel is supposed to join, but we know he's got he's got business also that prevents him from. <laughs> okay. Depends on the result of the elections. <laughs> that should not change anything. Don't worry. Okay, so apparently we'll get to meet Rob and Russell. These are ones we know. Wesley, it's not far away. Well, Texas, so. Texas, right? Uh, Tennessee. Yeah, I live in Texas. Tennessee, same thing. Okay, good. Matthew, you didn't answer. Oh, I didn't see. You have to come. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. I don't know yet. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Just to have an idea. So I will create the event right uh, before Netflix for sure, uh, free today or tomorrow. Um, just for people to be able to register and have an ID. Uh, then we'll create a, a website for the information and the location um, 
of the thing and, and start to work on a, an agenda. Well, these people can start booking their flights. So, so the event right, at least to make it official, you can buy a ticket and book, the, book your flight. Uh, and as soon as we have information of um, hotels, recommended hotels, and maybe discount prices, then we'll share it on a website. But you don't have to wait for the website to to book for everything. It's, it's, it, we do it also in advance, so you can have cheaper flights and hotels, okay? So don't wait. I won't wait, personally. Um, good. Questions? And uh, George will make a specific page with everything you need to see and visit and where to eat, and he knows everything, right? He will organize the the social event, the dinner. I'll be the social director. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Change out how many people were, are running around. I already have some ideas. Okay, good. Um, great. Okay, feel free to to send emails if you have questions and comments or suggestions. Um, what else? Oh, other topics. Uh, navigation. So you remember this meeting I put it, where we defined the uh, navigation uh, organization, which we'll try to stick to. I already did. You see design, site, tenants, and module. I need to move import export there, but trying to, to fix that. I thought about navigation, also the comments from uh, Matthew and the refactoring they're doing on the admin panel. And uh, so if you look at what we have, ah, oh, crap. Is it Yes, if you look at what we have on here, the, the first level, which is big, and then a second level on the right with, with a fixed thing. So this is what we actually removed from the new admin theme of O1, right? The first level and then the second level on the right to make it more flat and um, flat meaning not flat like this, but ex just one level in the same colon. Uh, I still think we need two columns. So my suggestion will be to go back to what is currently done in the O1 new admin theme with a list like this, which will expand if there are sub items, okay, on, on a single column, okay, like, again, like the admin theme in, uh, in O1, the new one. And for things that actually need a tree view, because they need to be dynamic or have lots of items, and they can't be represented there, like we have today in the media management, and like we will have tomorrow in the management and the content tree, um, fall back to another colon like we have in a one. Meaning, what I'm suggesting for two is to have, like we have in the admin theme, one colon. And if necessary, when we click on, a, on uh, an item, like content items, show up another colon with the content tree for content items. When we click on media, show up another colon with the media folder structure. Okay. Sorry, I think it's Wesley. Can you mute yourself? Yeah, okay, thank sorry. You. Thank you. Oops. That's okay. I recognize your background noise. Um, yeah, so, so remove this thing. Make it one colon like in the new admin theme, like we decided based on the feedback, and uh, but keep the second column optionally for specific items which need to display a huge tree, like the content tree, like the media, and whatever. Make sense? Okay, nobody disagrees. So I will just to mention that I want to, to do this. So this will be like this, but using the the, the technique that we have in the new admin theme, and um, trying to make something also uh, reusable for the tree view for the items which need it. Um, so I will look at um, what that has done with the content tree because this will be this has to be dynamic like this. Ajaxi. Um, that was I wanted to say. Uh, localization, localization. Ah, oh, totally left, but we have Sergio. Um, look, and we have Zoltan. Uh, localization. Where are my notes? Orchard two. Localization. Here, these are my notes for localization. I haven't created a design issue uh, yet, but these are some notes we can uh, read and uh, 
comment on. So localization is a, an important issue uh, or topic um, to address. What we have in, so there are two main ways to implement localization in a CMS. First way is called translation, translation sets. Um, it's probably what uh, the language that Drupal is using because I, I read much on Drupal. And the second way is called entity translation. What we have today in uh, Orchard is um, entity translation. No, sorry. <laughs> translation, translation set, sets. Meaning, uh, a content item is copied for each translation. So you have one content item for the default language. Let's call it the default language. Then one content item for French, one content item for German, and so on. And they are related, okay, together. Meaning, like in O1, a new content item has a culture part, for instance, a localization part, which defines this culture. But this part will also have a link to the original content item from the default language. So when we create, when we translate a default page which was made made in English, which will let's say the default language, we translate it in French, then this new content item that we create will have a property pointing to the content item of the English language. Okay, this is how we relate them together. Uh, this is what we have in one. This is called a translation set because for one content item, you can define a group of related content items, a set, for the, representing the same, the same entity, the same element, uh, but in different languages. Okay? Um, advantages. So you can have, for instance, different authors. Like you could have one author property different from different content items. Like I own the French one and someone else owns the English one. Okay? You can have different permissions for each content item. Uh, you can have different workflows, like different publishing workflow. Like you could say, when a French item is created, it needs to go from to, through a, nose, a specific workflow before being published, and you can do it differently for different language. Um, not the other publish one language, not the other. Yeah, and you can and workflow also in terms of uh, you can publish them independently. So one can be in draft and one can be published. Okay, one can be completely not existing and the other one can exist. So this is also something that you can do. They can have different states. Um, language dependent menu items. This I won't talk because this is related to the to the other part. Um, cons uh, not language dependent content. Yes. So something that we don't have, and Sergio will agree, is that um, it's hard to maintain um, the same value of a field, for instance, or any other data across content items from different languages. Uh, example, you have an e-commerce, you have a content type named product, and uh, maybe you have the same product in English and in French, but they have to share the same, the same height, width, okay? The same size. So this is the same size. The same content item means the same size. They just don't have the same title and same, I don't know, translation for description but they have the same size. So if you change the size of one product, the French product needs to change the size also. Okay? Um, um, so this is harder because today what we have to do, we create a new content item, so it has a different field data. So um, this is harder to, to, to maintain. Um, parts uh, like um, likes, stars, votes. Um, maybe you want to share the same values for the votes, whatever the translation that people vote on. Okay, like um, same thing. Five stars for the French one. Well, it should also be five stars for the English one. And as soon as I vote for one, I actually vote for the same concept, not two different items. But and maybe actually you want different values. So that that's that's uh, questionable. Um, solution is to copy the data in different translations. So this is to fix that, to fix this disadvantage. A solution that I suggested on Orchard One is that whenever we ch when when we set the metadata on a field saying it's not translatable, it's not localizable, then whenever a value is changed on one content item, the solution is to copy it on all the other content items of the same translation translation set. Okay. That's one solution to, to fix that. So in the end, I could say that 
if we can customize which fields are translated are localizable or not or which parts then maybe we could uh, have all the advantages with this solution another kind of uh, localization is the entity translation which is that every piece of data in the content item has uh, exists for um, the translation so you, you you the content item will own all the translations for all the values and if there is only one value to have for all translations you don't you just implement the default one the neutral one uh, so some fields can be unique so this is uh, the counterpart of this one um, yes and you have one content item which contains all the information for all the culture okay um, also in terms of performance when you want to load the French um, content item you load one content item one JSON here whenever you load a content item for a database you will load everything all the languages so this might be also better in terms of perf okay um, transliteration is different nothing to do here um, did I miss any comments so far a, a question on this Sebastian um, so you mentioned your solution of copying the data of, of things that are that you want to keep common would, would it be possible to implement a mechanism whereby you could choose whether you want to define a certain field or value on a translated item but if you don't define it you just defer to the value of, on the original hmm. so to, avoid ha to avoid having to copy it I mean and, and well, sort of store it in a duplicate but then when you load the French thing, the French one, you have to also load the English one, the default culture one. Mm, well, in terms of loading it from the database, you mean? Yep. Yeah, that would be the, the perf disadvantage, of course. But Perf and also complexity. What's the issue with denormalizing here? Uh, I was, well, I'm not quite clear on how it would work, but if you edit that value on the original, would it, would it, um, propagate to all of the other ones automatically you mean so how it will, yes how it will be done is um, when we publish the content item and so th the goal is to make it slower on writes and faster on reads so when we changed a when we change the content item when we save it or publish it we have to decide it we will then look for all the non localized information fields and parts and if we find this metadata on whatever field and part then we copy it to we load all the other languages and we copy the values to them we duplicate uh -huh. it and save. okay so, so conceptually and in the UI you wouldn't be able to define values for these oh. on the translated item correct uh -huh. or okay. yeah, it's that either that the UI is different because then we could decide yes I want to be able to change it in any language it will just be propagated or you can only change it on the default language up mm. to us I don't know. Might be an option too. Like, okay. And it's using a simple can, handler. Yep. Can we take advantage of the document, uh, the fact that we're storing as documents to actually have the translations as? Um, so a property could be a dictionary of versions instead of being just one version. Wait. See what I mean? Or can you make any sense? A property could be a dictionary version. So what you mean is one content item will own all the all the cultures. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is this entity translation. This is what entity translation is doing. When you have a content item, you have a dictionary indexed by yeah. culture name, and then under you have the objects, yeah. and and there are pros and cons for each solution. And in this case, again, uh, so it's fine because it's easier to translate things. And but you have to load one. You have to load all the languages to display a single one. Yeah, is that a problem? Um, there are issues with that um, because let's say you have some More fields. Class, but uh, so, so it could be otherwise lazy for everything else. There are issues. I didn't write down the cons here that's sad um, so if it's at the and by the way pretty much everything that applies to localization also applies to versioning it's kind of kind of the same thing right 
and in ver versioning in O2, every version is a new document. You, you did write down the pros of the other approach. I guess those would be the cons of this one. Like yes. not having them? Yes. So, but at the same time, you could have, if the dictionary is at the top level of the content item, everything could be independent. So you could have different authors, different permissions, and so on. Different parts, different values. But how would you then have the common value? Where would you put that in the common, if you have a dictionary of things, how would, where do you put the common values? Not inside the dictionary, but then when you navigate your thing, or you could put it in the neutral culture entry. Well, wouldn't you know beforehand which values are localizable and which ones are not? And the ones mm -hmm. who, the ones that are, you would put in a dictionary, the ones that are not, you would just put one one value in the document. Yeah, that could be the metadata on the, on the item. Yep. Um, but then it's a first level concept. It's no more parts and everything. It's mm. yeah. Um, so what's the advantage of? But I, I I do like your approach though of uh, what what you explained to be the solution um, because it's it's like you say it's 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 like a denormalization for perf rather than a maintenance, like you get the maintenance and, um, benefits and the perf benefits. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, there was some, there was some issues with NCH translation. So for instance, for, for history, uh, Drupal now uses entity translation, but it was a pain in the ass. I've seen comments did, that lasted like days and months to, to find the correct way to do that. But, in the end, but, but they store in a relation database, yeah, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the, yeah the, I don't the see any advantage. The is that uh, document storage makes that a lot easier. But this thing too, because each culture in each version is a different document in document storage. You say, give me this version for this language, and you have one document. Yeah, but the, the, the point is being made in the chat here that uh, when, whenever you have relationships, actually, uh, it, it's better to have one sim simple uh, entity in the database that you can point your taxonomy to, for example. Or I No, I don't really agree. Yeah, not necessarily, yeah. And you can have relationships within documents even if it's not owned, and we have some cases like this. and and. A taxonomy might you might not want to point to you might want to point to a neutral one to any or to a different thing because again there are cross relationships like the the red the a term in French you might want to tag with the content item in French only and the term in English which is a translation of the term in French the translation you see and it's it's not that simple. Uh, Whenever I was looking at scenarios, you see on the right, and all issues, it looked much simpler with the translation sets than the entity translation. I should have written some examples. I will try to find some good uh, reasons not to do that. Um, this was, yeah, kind of same thing with that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, so this just to, to see the different uh, thing here, the two different concepts that we need to take into account. And then there are the issues, problems to solve for all these things, like um, culture invariant data, we talked about it, part of data might be translatable, image, image title, not the file. See, for instance, I have a media. The title is translatable, but not the binary content. Um, so the value of the URL of the file, of the yeah, the path in the file system or the, the binary uh, blob doesn't have to be translated. It has to be the same whatever the culture is, but the image title has to be changeable. Um, Let's not talk about this command. Uh, taxonomy and term are localizable. Okay, that we agree. We need taxonomies and terms to be localizable. Uh, parent terms don't have to be each other's location. Uh, 
localization. Parent terms don't have to be each other's localization. Um, meaning, meaning, yes, that's the issue with taxonomy. Do you replicate exactly the hierarchy in each language and each level of hierarchy points to the other's language hierarchy? Uh, sometimes no, because you don't have the same terms and the same structure in different languages. But maybe one node at the first level will be the translation of another node of another taxonomy in the third level. So it's not a, it doesn't match. So your parents don't have to match either. Parent term needs to be of the same local of the term. This right. So if you are a term in specific culture, your parent needs to be a term and your taxonomy needs to be a term of the same culture. And you see, Sergio, I will. I use boats also because you have boats. Uh, menus. A menu is a localizable content item. Um, this. I'm not sure. So, uh, oh yeah, I, I'm making over, but menus are also something like so taxonomies, uh, invariant data, menus, how to handle menus in, um, in different, uh, how to translate menus. How do we have to, to create one menu per um, culture independently? Not mentioning its culture. Uh, projection. Um, are projection localizable? It's not, I think projection won't be a content item. So should it be translatable? Should we translate projection? Um, should two widgets for two cultures use the same projection? Um, home page, a URL is unique and represented at least one case. Switching languages, widgets, global, con global content, site name, like the settings. Do we have multi settings per language? Site name, for instance. So do we localize the site object? Things that shouldn't be translatable, comments, users, holes. Okay, so I'm, yeah, this is what I'm looking at and uh, I will create a design issue so people can comment on everything. It's not easy, but we have something in you know, a one that can be extended uh, like this with the local with the with the denormalization of the data. Now we need to to see if we can also fix this issue. Actually, find a solution for that. Okay, so we'll create a file bug on, on GitHub. At least we have a begin the beginning of a, converse of a conversation. Okay. Um, other questions and comments? Sergio and uh, Sotiris, you can send emails or we can, I also need to, yeah. There are two other guys on the, on, on um, the issue tracker that uh, are very active in the localization and um, what I said is that I will create a design meeting to just talk about localization. It will take the full hour or maybe more if we need, but uh, this way we can see all the issues and how, how we can fix them. Uh, so this is what I will do um, around the same time, but another day that uh, Thursday and Thursday and Tuesday. Um, so I will create an issue and talk about that uh, on this issue. I will copy paste also your, all your comments to read them. Um, other questions? Nope. Good then. See you on Thursday.